Morning peeps, good morning everyone, how's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well, don't forget hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. This might be a long video because there is loads, and I mean loads to talk about from the world of boxing, so much has happened in the last couple of days, so we are going to try and cover every single story, we'll try. Um, before we start though, the reason we didn't do a Sunday session live yesterday, again, my apologies peeps, last one, last one, please forgive me. The reason we didn't do it yesterday is because I went to the cinema to watch Creed. I thought, you know what, let's go and see what all the hype is about. And for me, for me, for me, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I'm a bit old school. You know, I'm a fan of the Rocky movies. Um, I, in fact, I was a fan of Creed 1. I thought Creed 1 was one of the best of this, if you like, let's put them all in one bracket, the Rocky and Creed movies. Um, but yeah, didn't enjoy it at all. Um, it, well, it had the makings of a very, very good film. Like, I could see a really good storyline, but yeah, just not a fan. I mean, even, even obviously we, we know Jose Benavidez, like we know who he is, right? I mean, even to say he's going to fight for a heavyweight title, just in my head made no sense. Now for boxing, for non-boxing fans, it might be like, okay. But for us who know that Jose Benavidez fought 147, right? And campaigns in between 147 and 154, it made no sense to me. I was like, well, what are we doing? But yeah, for me, it had the makings of a really good movie and it just wasn't, it just wasn't. Um, so yeah, a bit disappointed. It did make me think of what are my favourite sort of um, Rocky movies. And it was disappointing to see Sylvester Stallone not in it as well, by the way. Um, and then I didn't think the training scenes were very good. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a sucker for a soundtrack. I didn't really have some of the, the old school Rocky soundtracks. But again, I think it's because I'm a bit old school. So, um, yeah, but very quickly, my favorite one. So Rocky one has to be Rocky one has to. if Rocky one's not your favorite, then sort your life out. So Rocky one, Rocky four, again, soundtrack. Give me, I'm an easy man to please. Give me soundtrack and good training scenes. And Rocky four of all the movies I've ever seen in my life. And we're talking millions. Rocky four soundtrack and training scenes. <laughs> Take my money now. Even when I go gym now, what do I put on? Rocky Four soundtrack. So Rocky Four, um, I'm gonna say I didn't mind a bit of Mr. T. You know, Rocky Three. I liked it. Redemption. Yeah, I like that. So that's um, that's number three. I might then have Creed, Rocky Two, and the rest can get out of here. Balboa, Rocky Five, Creed Three. I don't even really remember Creed Two, the storyline with Dolph Lundgren and his son. So yeah, disappointed. If you haven't gone and seen it, sorry to spoil it for you. All right, let's talk some boxing. Where do we start? I don't know. Let's talk with this one. Uh, Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron announced, done, happening. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to Matram. Thumbs up to Katie Taylor. You know, big thumbs up to Katie Taylor. Thumbs up to Chantel Cameron as well. Undisputed versus undisputed. This fight's going to happen at 140. It will be at the free arena. It's going to be, everyone tells them it's going to be the loudest thing I've ever been to in my life. And I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. I went to Headingley for Josh Warren to Mauricio Lara. If you're telling me it's going to be louder than that, then take my money. But yeah, very excited to be out there for that one. What a great fight. They announced it on Saturday. It was a shame Katie Taylor wasn't there, but she's not going to fly over. I get that. Um, but yeah, we're going to have it. Look, this is this is a tougher fight for Katie Taylor than Amanda Serrano. It is, it is. And look, I know... I know Amanda, in a lot of people's eyes, beat her last time, but Amanda's a lot smaller. I remember Amanda's coming up from 126. She's a lot smaller. Katie Taylor, sorry, Chantel Cameron is bigger, a lot bigger. Um, hits hard as well. I don't know if she's got the same kind of feet and hand speed. In fact, she doesn't have that that Amanda Serrano has, but she's just bigger. She's bigger. She's ready for this one. Everyone's been sad. You speak to people on the boxing scene for the last couple of years, they've been talking about Chantel Cameron beating Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor's like, all right, let's see run it <laughs> let's do it so yeah um big boxing news and again for matrim and the zone you had to keep that date you had to keep a show you, you had to because people weren't happy with the lineup you can't then remove something from the lineup so it's important for them as well i was obviously as you guys know in liverpool um robbie davis jr um had a, a freak freak accident knee so the ankle just fractured fractured and um or broke you might say, uh, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, being ringside and seeing it kind of just swell up. 
But literally, I, as soon as it happened, I ran rings, ran right to where his corner was just to have a look at his um, his ankle and they're taking the boot off. And I'm not quite sure if that's what they were supposed to do, but I don't know, I'm not a doctor. But it, the swelling was immediate. But look, prior to that, he got put down in the round prior to that. And uh, credit to Dara Foley, who took the fight on short notice. Like, again, they always say it, right? Um, what's the what's the phrase? They always say it and Ade's forgot what they say. Uh, stay ready, don't get ready, right? Stay ready. And Dara Foley was ready. Got the call on two and a half, three weeks notice. Got in shape, made the 135 limit. Oh, sorry, the 140 limit. It was 140, right, this fight? Uh, yeah, made the 140 limit and was ready. And um, now um, he's looking for a big fight. Now he's desperate to get on, again, that Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron card. So um, credit to him. Uh, Jack Cullen, look, it was always going to be difficult against Diego Pacheco. Um, always going to be difficult. I predicted that Pacheco would stop him in the seventh round to the body. He did it three rounds earlier and it was the body shot, which pretty much ended it. Um, looks a talent. Looks a talent. Only, what, 21-22 uh, that took his record to 18 fights, 18 wins. I think it's 15 or 16 knockouts. And that happens. As you know, once you're fighting opposition that you can blow away, you're going to have that type of record. It starts to slow down once you jump into world level. So we'll see if he carries the power up at world level. If he does, then obviously he's a bit of a problem. Uh, trains in that Benavides camp. So he's getting the best sparring you can possibly get, David Benavides and the rest. So um, yeah, he looks a bit special. So it's going to be interesting to see sort of the next two, three years for him. Very, very interesting. Um, a fight I didn't expect to go the way it did was in Australia. Tony Harrison um, got slept, got slept by Tim Zhu, got busted up, got beaten up, got broken up. Like everything you can think of, Tim Zhu did to him. Um, that's a statement win. It really is a statement win because look, Tony Harrison isn't a faded sort of guy. Tony Harrison isn't a guy, he's had a couple of wars, but Tony Harrison, what, 32, 33, still fresh, had a lot of time. It wasn't like this was a last minute dot com job. He had a lot of time to get ready for this fight as well. As soon as we found out, it wasn't going to be Jamal Charlo, Tim Zhu. And and he was talking the talk. He was talking the talk and rightly so, right? He was saying, Tim, who have you beaten? Yes, you're unbeaten, but you're really here because of your dad's name. That's what he was saying. What have you done? You know, you need to get to America and fight us, fight the top guys. And Tim was like, okay, we'll see. You know, you're, you're talking to talk, we'll see. And Tim put it on him, put it on him from the get-go. And in the end, I mean, I don't know what the ref was doing. Like, refs, refs, like, this isn't a battle to the death. This ain't it. This isn't gladiatorial times. Like, Tony Harrison was shipping far too many punches. And then the crazy thing about that ref is Tony Harrison went down. Like, okay, well, thank God, stop the fight. He's going to give him a chance to get up. Gives him a chance to get up. Tony Harrison's wobbling around the ring. And then he's like, okay, enough. I'm like, what are we trying to do? Like, Tim Zhu's a puncher. And Tony Harrison must have taken... How, how many clean shots did he take? I'm going to say around 15 to 20 clean. Clean. Big right hands. Big. Like, Tony, like Tim Zhu's winding up the uppercut. Winding the overhand. So over the top right. Like, really winding these shots in. I'm like enough we we've seen it enough so yeah um disappointed with the ref but very 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 happy for tim zoo um look it must be so difficult for these for these fighters um, who have famous fathers to then sort of leap out of your father's shadow and tim seems to be doing that you, you rarely see his dad around I've, I've noticed that right i mean he's, when sometimes when you look at these fighters coming through like chris eubank jr is one as an example we always saw chris senior around not obviously not for the last couple of years, but in the lead up to it, where Tim almost in the shadows. So he cost the zoo is almost in the shadows, doesn't want to be seen. It's almost like go and do your thing, son. And he's doing his thing. And um, I mean, that's a statement to put out there. If you're Jamel Charlo, look, Jamel Charlo's a, a beast, king of the division. He still expect to get what he's done. So he still expect to get the job done, but I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it'd be good to see how Tim performs outside of Australia, but so far, so good. Uh, let's talk about the action in France. Um, firstly, I think the most important thing to do is congratulate Dan Aziz. Got the job done, 12th round stoppage. He is now the European champion. Understand the journey, people. Southern area, English, British, Commonwealth, European. Solid. Solid, solid, solid. Old school, traditional route. And sometimes that's what you've got to do. And now, well, there's only one left, isn't it? There's only one left. Will he get a crack at a world title? Is he good enough? Well, I've always said, do that route 
So you, you, you told me you're better than area level. You've told me you're better than English. You've told me you're better than British. you told me you're better than Commonwealth. you told me you're better than European. Are you good enough for world level? Let's see what Boxer can do. Um, unfortunately, there's only two guys with belts, right? Sometimes this is where if you are a, a Dan Aziz, you, you may be hoping that there's four belt holders. There's only, there's only two. And the two are very good. The two are in the top 10 pound for pound. And we want to see those two fight each other. But, the, you know, other fights can be made. Boatsy looks like he's going to ink a deal with Sky. That's a fight that can be made. Yes, not a world title fight, but a very, very close third or second best option. Um, and then and then you look at fighters like, I don't know, I'm trying to think who would be a good name for him to fight in the light heavyweight division if he can't get that. Marcus Brown looks like he wants to come back and, and, and do some do some damage. Marcus Brown's a good one. Joe Smith, dangerous, big puncher. But again, I've always said this with Dan Aziz, what are we waiting for? Dan Aziz ain't no spring chicken. You go now, you don't go at all. Um, they tried. They tried, moving on. They tried unsuccessfully to rob Carlos Takan, who done a job on Tony Yoka. Uh, we're going to speak about what's going on with Tony Yoka in a minute. But Carlos Takan, I mean, the old war horse, the dog. The, um, you, know, you know when you think of the definition of a gatekeeper, and that might sound like I'm disrespecting him, I'm not. But he is that, isn't he? He's the definition of what you want to go world level, Knock on my door first. And boy, that's a difficult door to knock on. Because that guy's got something. He's got something. He's a pit bull. He's just, he's just yoked in his jack. <laughs> he has everything going for him, man. I love Tony. I love Carlos Stack, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, they tried to rob him. Split decision win. So in the end, as long as the person gets the right result, I'm, I'm happy. And they just about got it right. But um, look, Carlos Takam would always get fights. He would always be in the mix with guys. He, he, there's some good guys over here that he can fight. Like I, I wouldn't mind seeing Tony. Sorry, I keep saying that. Carlos Takam versus Daniel Dubois. It's a good one, isn't it? It's a good one. I like it. Uh, but as for Tony Yoka, back-to-back defeats, obviously Bacoli bust him up. And it's still, sometimes you always wonder how an unbeaten fighter reacts, especially a prospect, a good prospect, Olympic gold medalist, how they react to their first defeat and obviously hasn't reacted very, very well. So um, I'm not, they're banging upstairs again. I moved out of my studio to avoid all this and uh, started again. Um, but yeah, I've always wondered how uh, an unbeaten fire reacts and obviously it's not working out for him now. i um, not quite sure what happens with Tony Yoka. Look, still a good fighter. Still very slick, good jab. Um, but mentally, mentally. And look, we always hear this. I mean, a lot of people speak about it with AJ. Mentally, like that seems to be the biggest hurdle for a lot of these fighters to get over. They're all very, very talented. Don't don't let anyone tell you Tony Yoka is not talented. They don't give out Olympic gold medals for free. I know some people say Joe Joyce won that, but even if it was silver, they don't give those things out for free. So he's a talented boxer, but mentally now, he just seems to be in um in a bad space. He does. Um, how old is Tony Yoka? Let's let's hope he's not in his thirties. If he's like 29, 28, what is he? Thirty, exactly thirty. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe get away from France. Maybe maybe do that. Maybe your next couple of fights are in the US. Um, a small show out there, maybe. Um, a small show in the UK. Obviously, there is that link now with Sky Sports and Boxer. We obviously saw them out there. So maybe you get away from the pressure of being the poster boy for French boxing. Maybe. Just thinking outside of the box. All right. Um, what did I see? The other day, this is what I saw. Francis Ngannou confirms talks with Deontay Wilder. It says next step in his career has to be boxing. Yeah, he said, look, he has conversations with Eddie and AJ. But he said the biggest conversation is with Deontay Wilder. He said they pretty much have shook hands on a deal. They pretty much verbally agreed that they are going to fight each other next. Now, whether or not that happens is a whole different discussion. And that's not what this video is about. This video is about um, whether or not this fight makes any sense whether or not you guys are excited about the fight uh, and I think it does make sense and I am very very excited about it um look I wanted and I think we all wanted Deontay Wilder and Andy Ruiz Jr we all know the situation with PBC financially so it looks like that's not that fight's not going to happen we aren't going to see Deontay Wilder AJ we probably will see it maybe fingers crossed but that's not going to happen until at the very earliest the end of 2023, we're not, and thank God, we're not going to see Wilder Fury 4 because it looks like we're going to get Fury Usyk. So you look at the options out there for Wilder 
And especially we're talking options that bring in that because that's what he's used to now. There aren't that many. I mean, Herkovic is one, but is that a big fight? Risk reward, you know, the risk is quite big. The reward is quite small. Um, so look, there, there are, look, Wilder can always do, I guess, I was going to say decent numbers, but Helena says he can't. So if you're Wilder, you look at the challenge out there that can bring in, bring in the bacon. And the biggest challenge out there that will bring in the money is Francis Ngannou, former UFC heavyweight champion. Everyone talks about his power as well. You're talking about two of the most powerful punchers we probably ever have seen. It's ridiculous the power that both of them have. I like it. I like the fight. I think it does really good numbers. Um, and I said already, like, if I'm DAZN, I'm, I'm making a play for it because I think this will this will get your sign-ups. Everyone knows who Ngannou is. Everyone certainly knows who Wilder is. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. My thing for Ngannou, I was talking to someone about this because we were talking about John Jones. We were saying, um, surely, you know, I know Dana White said, you know, Ngannou can never come back to the UFC, but surely eventually John Jones calls him out enough times to the point where it makes so much money that he does go back. But what if he gets knocked out in boxing? Does that hurt his legacy a bit to go back? I don't know. Like if I'm talking when he, I'm talking get iced. Like for example, when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather, it was more a case the referee stopped. It was just tired, wasn't he, really? I'm talking Wilder could poleaxe him. Does that then affect him going back and selling the John Jones fight? I think it does. So I think, you know, it's a bit risky what Ngano's doing, but he's going to make a, a hot, hot load of money. Like so much money fighting Deontay Wilder. You just do it. You do it. And I'm telling you now, if this, if this guy clips Wilder, ain't good, man. Ain't good, man telling you now it, like, his techniques all over the place it's ropey but this guy's got power like go and watch his fights guys if you can in the UFC he hits you you sleep and you don't get up you sleep I mean you snore um, so yeah it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out but um, I am excited to see Ngana in a ring and um, look, if it's not Wilder I, it, look, there's no we've no idea what's going on with Dillian White we've no, I no idea what's going on with Derek Chisora so there are options out there for him but Wilder's obviously bigger than those two guys probably combined um, this is interesting John T Devontae Davis holding camp at Mayweather Boxing Club reunites with Ellaby head of Garcia fight you yeah, remember when um, Leonard Ellaby went on stage and spoke at this press conference I was like what's going on there are, are we back Mayweather promotions um, but they haven't got a deal I think Javante just almost signed him up for this fight, right? And why wouldn't you, right? I mean, you've worked with Leonard for seven, eight years, maybe longer. So why wouldn't you have someone with that experience in your camp to help you negotiate the biggest fight of your career? Financially, the biggest by far. So it makes sense. Um, it will be interesting to see when they do their like 24-7 documentaries, whether or not Floyd's somehow in it. Because I'm desperate for Floyd to be a part of this just because, again, I like that dynamic of Floyd, Javante, Oscar, Ryan. I think it just makes sense. I like it. So, yeah, that's very, very good as well. All right. Um, anything else? Um, this was interesting. And I've heard there's some truth to both of these uh, claims. Uh, Martin Bacoli claims he stopped Daniel Dubois. There's no point lying about that. And Alexander Usyk. Now, when I read that, I was like, what, Usyk? But I'm hearing he did stop Usyk to the body. Now, I don't know if that person is telling me the truth, but I heard this was fact, that Martin Bacoli stopped Usyk to the body. Now, look, I always hate when people talk about what they did in sparring because Usyk will bust him up in the ring. He would bust him up, man. Um, but, hey, got to do what you got to do, man. Um, yeah, I'm hearing it's true. Usyk's team have come out, by the way, in the last sort of 20, 30 minutes and said, ah, it's rubbish. He didn't do it, but I'm hearing he did do it. Everyone stops everyone in sparring. Everyone. Your favorite fighter has been stopped. Your favorite fighter has been hurt. It's just what it is, man. Like, you never, you've no idea where someone is when it comes to sparring. Someone could be literally right at the top of their game and someone just walks in off the street and oh, yeah, I'll give you a few rounds, even though I've just rolled out of bed after eating a kebab and drinking a beer last night. You've no idea where they are. So don't read into that at all. At Fury enters first day of training camp for Usyk fight, says six weeks is all he needs. I, I think that's fair. I mean, if you're an athlete, surely you stay in shape. Like, you don't go into sparring to get in shape. You go into sparring to sharpen your tools. So Fury should be in shape. So, yeah, I think six weeks is fine. 
Um, and I, I look forward to this one. You know, someone tweeted at me. Um, they called me a Matrum C-U-N-T, which wasn't very nice. Not just me, Darren Barker, Adam Cattrall, for us not being happy with the purse splits. By the way, I don't give a flying fuck about the purse splits. I just want the fight to happen. My theory of it was just that Tyson Fury was greedy. But what they did tweet, and it was fair. They said, Adi, you didn't say anything when Chisora took the lion's share in his fight with Usyk. Number one, we didn't know. Let's be frank. Who knew what the purse splits and who cared about what the purse splits were for Fury, sorry, Usyk Chisora? I had no idea. But I think the most important thing you're missing out in there is since that fight, Usyk's become the unified heavyweight champion of the world. Since that fight, Usyk has done a stadium with AJ. Since that fight, Usyk is pound for pound number one. Kind of different. So there's, so there's no point in bringing Chisora Usyk facts and figures to the table because they have no bearing on where Usyk is right now. That was Usyk's second fight heavyweight. His third fight beat AJ. Full fight beat AJ. It's a different Usyk, my man. It's a completely different Usyk. So um, yeah, you can you can take that fact, rub it up, really, and stick it up your you know what. Anyway, we are done.